I believe it will drive the field of sport analytics into a new age. I am Sandere Karelainen and I work as a software developer for Wisport. I do mostly backend development and I specialize in computer vision systems and also machine learning. My work involves uh, developing the cutting-edge cloud-native software that makes up the Wisport system. And I've also had the opportunity to work with uh, system installations around the world, so I don't have to spend all my time sitting at a desk. Wisport in its entirety involves many different aspects of information processing. The core of our system is built on collecting spatio-temporal data and then calculating a ton of different statistics from said data. We use a radio-based tracking system to track the players, the referees and the puck. And then advanced algorithms are run in the cloud to refine the spatial data and to calculate statistics for the different players and teams and even referees. We also use uh, multiple camera angles to record and analyze the match. And all of that data is served to end users and third parties via different APIs and front-end applications. And we also provide a lot of new experiences for spectators at the different venues. We started the project in early 2017 and since then the business has scaled up fast and now we are running three, soon four leagues, which ends up being well over 2,000 matches each year. And we've also had to scale to different sports since the system is nowadays also actively used in football. Early on in the project, we made good choices regarding the technology stack by selecting the microservices pattern and designing everything for horizontal scaling from the ground up. For example, we can use C++ to implement and then GPUs to run advanced computer vision algorithms, for example, and provide customized statistics with very simple serverless solutions using any scripting language of our choice. This gives us a high degree of scalability in both the number of clients we can serve and also the variety of features that we can offer. Computer vision systems have long been used to track humans and other moving objects with very high precision and accuracy. That's why we've been introducing computer vision to Wisport with very promising results. Our human tracking model has been specifically trained to track hockey and football players from multiple different camera angles. And also tracking a regular football is also possible, but that's a separate model. While detecting the players and referees from a camera feed is in real time, is, that's a fairly easy problem with today's technology. The identification of those players uh, is a problem that is at least an order of magnitude more difficult. Robust tracking of humans over time is very complicated, especially when they are sometimes obstructed by other humans, the other players. And usually this requires a multitude of different camera angles that have been specifically set for that purpose. And Obviously, processing those camera angles requires quite a lot of compute. With the Wisport system, we can actually use the radio-based tracking data to uniquely identify the players in the camera's field of view. Uh, that's a fairly straightforward mapping from the 3D object space to the camera space. We can then augment the tracking data with all kinds of insights that the computer vision system provides, such as whether a shot was a wrist shot or a slap shot, which way the player is facing, what are they doing with the stick, etc. Even with just one camera angle, we've gone as far as estimating the entire pose of the players, the positions of their hands and feet, and so on. Convolutional neural networks in general can be used to build models that can infer all kinds of data from the players on the field, which then naturally pushes our analytics even further. It's a, I think it's a great addition to the high quality data that we already collect. In addition to augmenting the radio-based tracking data, the computer vision system can also assist with actually inferring the player and referee positions entirely on its own. Uh, this means that even in cases where some players or even the entire team is not wearing any radio transmitters, we can still produce accurate spatial data and then use it in our analysis. The massive amount of tracking data that we have used for supervised learning 
it actually has enabled us to approach the computer vision based identification with an edge that no one else has. Using the tracking data, we've built a model that can identify players with fewer camera angles than has previously been possible. Our analytic system has been built from the ground up to be agnostic with regards to the system that is actually doing the tracking. So this allows us to work separately on improving the actual raw spatial input to the analytics. And naturally any improvement in the quality, complexity and the richness of the model of the sporting event should propagate into even more precise statistics and deeper insights. Using just computer vision to track the players and different events of the match enables us to run our match analytics without any wearables. But the well-known drawback of standalone computer visions, vision systems such as that is that they require a lot of compute either locally or somewhere in the cloud. But we have the data and know how to build the most efficient solution to this problem. In addition to applying convolutional neural networks for object recognition and different regression problems, we've also been experimenting with different end-to-end -end neural network architectures that actually ingest the, the tracking data. And we've been actually able to see that the amount of data that we have collected so far enables us to fit and train models that seem to understand how the flow, flow of an ice hockey match goes and how the players behave in different situations. For example, we've been uh, able to infer the position of the puck with very high accuracy with a deep learning system that ingests only the positions of the players and also the referees. Likewise, if we were to remove a player from the data, the neural network can give incredibly accurate predictions of where the missing player is. Having these huge amounts of data for different levels of ice hockey has allowed us to dig deep into how different leagues and teams and even players play. I think in general, applying these advanced machine learning methods such as supervised and unsupervised learning and also autoencoders is very exciting and I believe it will drive the field of sport analytics into a new age, especially with the data that we have at our disposal. Neural network architectures similar to what we've been experimenting with have been used and studied before, but the amount of data that has been used to train these networks is it's very limited in its modality and the richness of the data really is what sets Y-Sport apart from the rest.